Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel AgriAddict. As you all know, we are providing online courses for four major subject groups including Plant Science, Physical Science, Agronomy and Entomology and complete mock test bundle for six major subject groups including Plant Science, Physical Science, Agronomy, Entomology, Horticulture as well as Social Sciences which will be really helpful for your competitive examinations preparations including ICAR, JRF, SRF, CUET, IBPS and other agriculture related examinations. Thanks a lot for the huge responses for the previous videos. Let's make the concept simpler with Agriadic platform. So if you really like our content, please like, comment, share and subscribe our YouTube channel Agriadic. I am Ajay Antosoy. I have done my undergraduation from College of Agriculture Padanakad, Kerala Agricultural University and did my masters in the subject of agricultural economics from College of Agriculture Rajendra Nagar PJTSAO Hyderabad. And currently I am pursuing my PhD in the same subject in Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. In the year of 2021, I have secured All India Rank 27th in the ICIR JRF examination. And in the year of 2023, I have secured All India Rank 4th in the ICIR SRF examination. And in the same year, I have qualified ASRV net also. So today we will be dealing with an important concept in microeconomics that is elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand, the concept of elasticity of demand was given by none other than Alfred Marshall. I hope you recall the uh, importance of this economist Alfred Marshall. He have he was the uh, proponent of the welfare uh, welfare definition of economics, the cardinal utility approach, including law of diminishing marginal utility, law of eco marginal utility, and consumer surplus approaches of the consumer behavior analysis that we have discussed in the previous videos. So uh, in the previous lecture, we have seen how the law of demand works, right? So law of demand was. Uh, giving the functional relationship between the quantity demanded by the consumer towards the price change of the same commodity right so when the price increases the quantity demanded contracts and when the price decreases the quantity demanded extends so there were a negative relationship between the quantity demanded as well as the price of the commodity but law of demand could it explain how to what extent the quantity demanded will be increasing when unit price increases or decreases to what extent the quantity demanded will be changing that was not at all given by law of demand and an improved version of law of demand that is the concept of elasticity of demand could explain to what extent the quantity demanded will be increasing or decreasing according to the corresponding price change. So elasticity of demand is nothing but the sensitivity of the demand of a commodity to the changes in the price to what extent the quantity demanded will be changing for the change in the price for a unit rupee increase or for a unit rupee decrease of the uh, price of the commodity to what extent the quantity will be changing so as we have already discussed there were three types of uh, demand that is price demand was there income demand was there cross demand was there which we have dealt in the previous lecture recall the concepts price demand is nothing but the functional relationship between between the price of the uh, commodity as well as the quantity demanded of the consumer right under the income demand what was the income demand the quantity demand the functional relationship between the quantity demanded as well as the income level of the consumer and what happens in the uh, case of cross elasticity uh, sorry cross demand it is the functional relationship between the quantity demanded of a commodity with respect to the price change of its related commodity it can be a substitute or it can be a complement so likewise elasticity of demand is also there are three types of elasticity of demand that is price elasticity income elasticity and cross elasticity once we cover the concept of price elasticity you could easily recall or you you could easily remember income elasticity concept as well as cross elasticity concept what is price elasticity price elasticity is the relative change in the quantity demanded to the relative change in the price so what is the relative change happening in the quantity demanded with respect to the relative change in the price or with respect to the unit change in the price that is given by the price elasticity so here we can see that price elasticity the terminology price is there therefore quantity demanded with respect to the price change what happens in the income elasticity we can say that the income elasticity is nothing but the relative change in the quantity demanded to the relative change in the income what happens in the cross elasticity it is nothing but the relative change in the quantity demanded by a consumer with respect to the relative change in the price of the related commodity let there be quantity sorry commodities x and y so therefore we can see that say that it is nothing but the relative change in the quantity demanded by the consu consumer for the commodity X to the relative change in the price of the commodity Y. That is given by cross elasticity. So these are the three types of elasticities and mathematically 
this relative change in the quantity as well as the relative change in the price will be given by percentage percentages right so price elasticity is given by this mathematical formula that is percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the price how we are arriving the percentage change in the quantity demanded that is nothing but the change in the quantity divided by initial quantity into 100 that will be giving you the percentage change in the quantity demanded so therefore income elasticity is nothing but the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the consumer's income how we will arrive at the cross elasticity cross elasticity cross elasticity is nothing but we are considering commodity a and commodity b and we are considering the demand for the commodity a so therefore we can say that percentage change in quantity demanded for commodity a divided by percentage change in with respect to the percentage change of the related commodity that is b so percentage change in the price of commodity b and this is how we could arrive at the cross elasticity between two commodities or two relatable commodities it can be substitutes or it can be complements and the same procedure that we have followed calculate the price elasticity you can calculate here also so percentage change will be given by the change in the quantity demanded divided by initial quantity of the commodity and change in the, the percentage change in the income is given by how change in income divided by initial income into 100 so this is how we can you could arrive at the income elasticity as well as cross elasticity so once we arrive at the value the elasticity value we should interpret to, uh, to what extent the elasticity is so there are different extents those extents we are going to discuss next so the first extent is perfectly elastic and the extreme there are two extreme extents first one is perfectly elastic and the second one is the last image that is perfectly inelastic and in between there are two intermediary things that is coming that is relatively elastic that is the second one the third one relatively elastic and the fourth one is relatively inelastic and in the middle it is nothing but the unit elastic so there are five extents in general there are five extents in general so first one is perfectly elastic what happens in the perfectly elastic scenario see in every graphs we are portraying the quantity demanded for the commodity in the x-axis as well as the price in the y-axis so here what happens in the price change here the price change is so minute right Suppose we can say that the price has increased by 1 paise. So the price change is really, really minute, but there is an increase. But according to law of demand, we know that the when the price increases, the quantity will be decreased. Or the, when, when the price decreases, the quantity will be increased. So here actually the price decreases by just 1 paise. But for that particular minute price change, what happens is the quantity demanded, it extends like anything. Or for a small increase, the demand contracts like anything infinitely it is contracting or infinitely it is extending that is what is happening in the perfectly elastic demand so for a minute price change the quantity demanded extends or contracts or changes infinitely that is happening in the perfectly elastic demand what is the other case in the 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 other extent that is perfectly inelastic demand right suppose uh, you can you can consider the example for the salt salt what if the price of the salt is increasing what if the price of the salt is decreasing? Well, if if you are uh, if the price of the salt decreases, will you be consuming more salt? Will you be demanding more salt? Because the salt is a fixed quantity that you need, right? Whether the price increased or whether the price decreased, you don't care about it because the salt has to be in a constant quantity that has to be consumed or has to be added to the food items. Because if it is less or if it is more, we cannot survive or we won't be and uh, we won't be liking it, right? So there irrespective of the price changes the quantity demanded remains the same right so whether the price increases infinitely or whether the price decreases infinitely irrespective of the price change the quantity demanded does not change at all that is the case of perfectly inelastic demand so therefore the elasticity of demand is zero there in the case of perfectly elastic the elasticity of demand is infinity and remember the uh, how the demand curve is working here so see here in the infinitely elastic case demand or in the perfectly elastic case of demand uh, uh, what the demand curve is parallel to x-axis right parallel to x-axis or vertical to y-axis in the opposite case 
in the perfectly inelastic demand what happens to the demand curve it is vertical to x axis or it we can say that it is parallel to y axis and in between there are relatively elastic demand and relatively inelastic demand what is happening in the relatively elastic demand see this is p1 and this is q1 what happens here this is p2 and this is q2 could you recognize what is the change between the price change as well as the quantity change see here the percent the, the change in the price is relatively small right but for the small price change the price has decreased from p1 to p2 and the relatively small price change the quantity extended like anything right the the the, the relative change in the quantity demanded or the change in the quantity was more than that of the proportionate change in the price there comes the important concept concept of relatively elastic demand and here the elasticity of demand is greater than one and less than infinity and in the case of relatively elastic demand in the total the, the, the exact opposite case for a large proportion of the price change only a smaller proportionate change of the quantity demanded is happening suppose let this be the p1 and this be the p2 and this one is q1 and this one is q2 see p1 to p2 there is a large increase but q1 to q2 there is only a small increase so relatively for a higher price change only the change in the quantity happening only in a lower proportion so that is called relatively inelastic demand and here the elasticity of demand is greater than zero and less than one and in the middle there is a unitary elastic demand here nothing but the proportionate change of the quantity demanded as well as the price will be same suppose the price is decreasing from 10 rupees to 5 rupees and the quantity demanded will be increasing from 15 to 20 so the change in the price is 5 rupees the change in the quantity is also 5 so therefore it is called as unitary elastic so remember there are five extents perfectly elastic perfectly inelastic relatively elastic relatively inelastic and unitary elastic and remember the value of the elasticity of demand and don't forget to correlate the demand curves slope also so what happens here when the commodity is more elastic when it is approaching the perfect elasticity concept what happens here the demand curve the demand curve is getting more flatter right so if we are seeing a flatter demand curve what we can say the commodity is more elastic but when it is more inelastic when it is approaching more inelastic we can say more inelastic or less elastic what happens to the slope of the demand curve it is increasing right so when the commodity is more elastic the slope of the demand curve will be more flatter but when it is more inelastic or less elastic we can say that the commodity is the, the the slope of the demand curve will be much more steeper so the steepness of the slope you should correlate with the elasticity concepts and don't forget to uh, remember the values of the elasticity of demand uh, when it comes to price elasticity there are different methods to measure or to calculate the price elasticity the first method is total outlay method or expenditure method how we should calculate the expenditure method uh, the expenditure for a commodity suppose there is unit price and number of quantities that we are consuming so the total expenditure will be nothing but the p p into q suppose i have i i want to buy five pens and for one pen there is 10 rupee so the total expenditure i am uh, spending for uh, buying pen is 50 rupees right so this is how we are calculating the expenditure uh, uh, the total expenditure for a commodity so see uh, the when the price changes how our total expenditure for a commodity changes according to that we can find the price elasticity so according to the exp the change in the expenditure with respect to the price change of the co uh, commodity how it is varying that will be depicted by the price elasticity so here we compare the total expenditure of the consumer before and after change in the price and remember these three points that is when the total expenditure remains unaltered even if the price increases or the price decreases for a commodity suppose this is the pen and this price of the pen has increased from 10 rupees to 15 rupees but i am currently uh, spending 50 rupees for the same even after the price change i am ready to spend my 50 rupees for purchasing the pen even if the quantity that i am getting is less than that the i had before so when the uh, even uh, when the uh, price changes and the uh, expenditure is remaining the same we can say that the elasticity of demand is unity or elasticity of demand is one okay and what happens when the expenditure increases when the price is falling for a commodity when the price is falling i am ready to spend much more for that commodity there comes uh, there we can conclude that the demand for that commodity is elastic so when price decreases 
if my expenditure is increasing i can say that the demand is elastic and what happens if the price decreasing and my expenditure is also decreasing the price of the pen has already decreased so that i could buy more but still my total expenditure i am uh, giving for uh, that commodity will be less uh, or we can say that what what happened in the case of salt we have already told that irrespective of the price change the quantity demanded will be con constant no so even if the price is decreasing my total expenditure also for salt will be decreasing right so that we can say that the that the commodity will be inelastic so remember that when price changes expenditure is not changing we can conclude that the demand for the commodity is unitary elastic if the expenditure increases with uh, red reduction of the price or when when it is opposite in the opposite direction we can say that uh, the commodity is more elastic or, and if the expenditure as well as the price is in the same direction we can say that the commodity is less elastic so we are going to see the practical scenario here so here uh, we can say that the price is decreasing continuously from 5 to 4.5 rupee 4 rupee 3 rupee 2 rupee and 1 rupee and the corresponding quantity that i am uh, buying also has given here and the total expenditure is given by the product of price as well as quantity right we have already seen that p into q will be giving the total expenditure so see uh, continuously the price is reducing so see when the price is reducing 5 to 4.5 rupee and then to 4 4.5 to 4 rupee what happens my total expenditure is increasing right so on the range of price from 5 to 4 rupee what happens my total expenditure is increasing it is opposite right so therefore the elasticity of demand is greater than one or i can say that the commodity is more elastic right but when again from 4 rupee to 3 rupee my price has re reduced the price of the commodity has reduced but i am spending the same budget for that commodity so we can say that the elasticity of demand is, is equal to one and again the price is reducing from 3 rupee to 2 rupee 2 rupee to 1 rupee and i can see i can see that when the price reduces my total expenditure for that commodity again reduces so i can say that the elasticity of demand is here less than one or i can say that the commodity in that price range is inelastic so from 5 rupee to 4 rupee i can say that the commodity is more elastic but when it when in, in the price range of 4 rupee to 3 rupee the commodity is unitary elastic and in the price range of 3 rupee to 1 rupee i can say that the commodity is inelastic so this is how according to total expenditure method we are arriving at the elasticity of demand or price elasticity of demand so uh, that's all about the expenditure method and the second one is point elasticity of demand assume that d d dash is the demand curve of the consumer and you have given a straight line of the uh, uh, straight line demand curve of the consumer and i am asking you to find out the elasticity of demand at different points that is a b c d and d dash so how we will be calculating the elasticity of demand at various points as we have already seen that this the slope of this straight line will be constant no so therefore we can say that the slope of the demand curve is constant but the slope of the demand curve is constant but we are not sure that the elasticity of demand also will be constant at every point because elasticity of demand will be different at each and every points that is actually we have to note down so how we should uh, uh, arrive at the elasticity of demand at a point it's a simple calculation that is nothing but the length of lower segment divided by length of the upper segment length of the lower segment and length of the upper segment as we have seen the point a is in the midway of the whole demand curve right so the length of the lower segment will be equal to length of the upper segment so therefore i can say that the elasticity of demand is equal to one or i can say that at the point a the commodity is perfectly elastic uh, sorry the commodity is unitary elastic what happens in the point b here the lower segment is la larger and the upper segment is smaller therefore the numerator will be greater than one therefore here the elasticity of demand will be greater than one therefore i can see that at point b the elasticity is more than one or it is relatively inelastic what happens in the point d there the lower segment is larger but the upper segment is zero therefore lower segment divided by upper segment no so therefore the upper segment is zero therefore the elasticity of demand is equal to infinity or i can say that at the point d the commodity is perfectly elastic what happens here the lower segment is smaller the la uh, upper segment is larger therefore obviously the elasticity of demand will be less than one right the elasticity of demand is uh, less than one implies nothing but the 
there at the point C, it is relatively inelastic. What happens here in D dash point? In the D dash point, the lower segment is zero. Therefore, the numerator will be zero. Obviously, the elasticity of demand also will be zero. Therefore, the point D dash, elasticity of demand is zero. And if the elasticity of demand is zero, we can say that at the point D dash, the commodity is the commodity is perfectly inelastic. Perfectly inelastic. In the similar way, using this equation, we can say the commodity will be elastic or inelastic along the points of the demand curve. So this is the point elasticity of demand. And the third one is arc elasticity of demand. Unlike the point elasticity of demand, in the arc elasticity of demand, if we see, this is P1, this is Q1, and the price has decreased to P2, and the quantity has increased or expanded to Q2. So I am asked to determine the elasticity of demand across this region. In the point elasticity of demand, we were only calculating the elasticity of demand at a single point, but we were asked to calculate the elasticity of demand across the range of the demand curve or between two points of the demand curve. There we have to use the arc elasticity of demand. So in the arc elasticity of demand, we have to, it, it portions the, uh, it, it studies a portion of the demand curve and it is used to measure the price elasticity of demand between two points in the demand curve. And here, if we were given uh, given the initial quantity as well as final quantity, just apply this equation that is Q1 minus Q2 that is change in the quantity divided by average of the change in the quantity because a portion we are considering so therefore we have to take the average. So change in the quantity that is delta Q divided by Q1 plus Q2 by 2 that is the average change in the quantity as well as the change in the price divided by the average change in, uh, 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 average of the uh, change in the price. So, so therefore the 2 and 2 will be cancelled and uh, applying this equation, you will be easily arriving at the arc elasticity of demand. And there are some factors that is determining the elasticity of demand, which are the first one is type of goods. When the type of goods changes, the elasticity will be uh, also differing from goods to goods. Especially, we can say that uh, what happens to the necessaries, we, as we have already seen, uh, salt is a necessary in our food item, right? So, salt can be uh, considered as a necessity and then the, as we have already seen, the demand curve was inelastic, right? It was the steeper, it was the having the most steeper demand curve, that is, it was perfectly inelastic or, for, uh, or we can see that in the case of necessaries, actually, the demand curve will be inelastic when compared to the comforts as well as luxuries. When it comes to comforts and luxuries, it will be more elastic than that of necessary. The second one is goods which is having several uses. So, uh, in the case of water, we can use it for consumption purposes, for our thirst, for our kitchen purposes, for our cleaning purposes. It can be used in the machineries, right? So, water, the commodity is having many uses. So, the more the uses, the commodity will be more elastic lesser the uses the commodity will be less elastic or I, we can say that it will be more inelastic okay what happens if a commodity is having ex, uh, like more substitutes if i am having a pen i have uh, pencil is there something i have uh, like the more substitutes i am having i the the, the, the elasticity for the, uh, the that commodity also will be more so therefore if uh, water i am using for uh, my thirst but there is Coca-Cola is there, Pepsi is there, Maza is there, Ma is there, tender coconut water is there. So I have more substitutes to uh, what to satisfy my want of thirst. So therefore, the more the existence of the substitute is there, the the demand for the commodity also will be more elastic. And the possibility of the postponement. For example, uh, in the case of luxuries, we we can see that when the price is when the price decreases, we can buy that. If the price is increasing we could postpone it because it is not much needed, right? So therefore, uh, but in the case of necessaries, we cannot postpone. That's why necessaries are coming under less elasticity situation. But in the case of luxuries or uh, for those commodities for which the use is not immediate or the usage can be postponed to some other time, for those commodities also, the elasticity will be really higher or we can say that it is more elastic. And in the range of prices, generally we can see that in the very higher range of the uh, of uh, for those commodities for those commodities which is having higher price range like diamond uh, like platinum luxuries and all and for those commodities which is having very lesser price range, like uh, matchbox salt likewise for those commodities the demand will be relatively less elastic those which is having a regular price change which is coming in a uh, affordable price change for them it will be more elastic but 
for those goods which is having very high price or very low price the uh, usually uh, generally it is not uh, universal to every commodity but generally we can say that the range of prices also will be determining the elasticity of demand so that's all about today's topic as we have already discussed uh, the complete mock test bundle for the social sciences is, are available in our uh, aggregate platform uh, in uh, which is available in the play, play store and you can see the notifications in our telegram group also if you really like our content please uh, like comment share and subscribe to our youtube channel if uh, some of the topics that you want aggregate to deal with uh, feel free to comment down uh, to our uh, videos so see you in the next video thank you bye